All right, so what I have here on the bench today is a Wells Gardner K7400. And as you can see, it's basically just black and white. And it's not an issue of the color pots on the neck board. Uh, you can adjust those to your heart's content. Nothing changes. And if you look here on the remote board, uh, you can see there's contrast right here. If I turn this up and down, it doesn't make any difference at all. So I have no contrast control. I have no color control with the color pots. And it's a very common failure on all of these chassis, 7400, 7500, U2000, U5000. Across the board, it's always the same issue. It's R811, R811. Now, it's in a specific location on the 7400, uh, as, in, as opposed to the U2000 and 5075. They're all in the same area, but it's either one location over from the other or vice versa. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and just take this off the frame here, and I'll show you where it's at and I'll measure it and all of depending on which version of, of main board you have you know there's different versions you know P738E this is a U5000 and things like that uh, yeah so depending on which version of main board you have it's gonna read differently but it should always read between 50k ohm and 100k ohm whether it's 65k ohm or 81k ohm or 93k ohm it should always be between 50k ohm and 100k ohm as you can see here, I'm fairly confident that this resistor is either way out of tolerance or not functioning at all. So what I'm going to do is um, take, so for instance on the U5000, it's right here. Uh, let me get my pointing device. On the U5000, it's this resistor right here. You can even kind of make out the R8, uh, where is it at? The R811. So it's right here on the 5000. But on the 7400, this resistor doesn't exist, and it's actually R811 is over in this position, right there, this one. So um, just wanted to show that since I have the 5000. But on the 7400, it's a different location. I'm going to take this off and show you where it's at. We'll measure it, and I guarantee you it's way out of tolerance. It's not between 50k ohm and 100k ohm. So I'm going to cut away here. I'm going to get this removed. So here's the chassis all off of the tube and I'm going to show you where R811 is located and we're going to test it and I'll bet you dollars to donuts it's way out of whack. So um, R811 on the 7400, I showed you on the 70, I'm sorry, on the U5000 where it's at, but on the 7400 it's, uh, oops, sorry, it's this guy right here, right there next to the capacitor. You'll see that on the U5000 there, it was over here. And they had this resistor. So on the 5000, it's this one, but obviously there's no resistor there on the 7400. So it's actually this one right there. And maybe you can make it out a little bit, but it actually says R811 right under it. So that's the resistor. So let's go ahead and check it. And we'll put our meter on ohms. And can I get this in frame here while I'm testing? Probably not. Now yeah, there we go. Okay, so if we go to R811 and one side on one, one on the other, and nothing. That is quite interesting. That is reading open, wide open. Well, that would explain why the image is black and white. <laughs> Both sides of the resistor in circuit, wide open. And it's not a meter problem. 0 0.4. Try it again here. And it is open. So, just for comparison, let's get the 5000 out here. And again, R811 on the 5000 is actually... Um, this one here, not over here, it's laid out differently, but it's on on 5000, it's right here on this side. So if we test that one, it should be between 50 and 100k ohm. Alright, meter is still good. Yeah, so if we test it on this one, it reads... about 80k ohm, right smack dab in the middle. Perfect. 
that's what it should read, somewhere between 50 and 100. 82 is about the uh, average nice round number, so 82.0k ohm. That's good. On our 7400, it's open. We'll test it again here. And, okay, well, it's not open, it's 3.4 mega ohm, I'm not touching the frame of the workbench here, am I? 3.4 mega, well, that's odd, it read open before, but now it reads 3.4 mega ohm. Well, I guess what we'll do, obviously, you saw, I mean, I'm not, not reading it incorrectly, because I'm reading it properly on the 5000, so it's not an issue of reading it incorrectly. Uh, there's obviously something wrong with it. It read open before, now it's 3.3 mega ohm. But regardless of that, there's definitely something wrong. So let's just pull it out of circuit and take it out of circuit. Because I'll bet you that'll just give us the best reading. So right. Now sometimes, I want to point out, sometimes you'll see an added resistor on the back. This resistor here is actually tied right to R811 on the other side. So a lot of times you'll see this resistor added. If you see that resistor added across R811, leave it there because it's, it's adding to the, the uh, resistance. So it's a factory mod. Just leave it the way it is if you see one like that. Okay, so let's mark where our resistor is here on the circuit. It's going to be Here and here. Once our desoldering gun gets up to speed. That should be good enough. So we'll take this. All right, that looks like that should work. Take it out. There it is. And let's measure it. Out of circuit. All right, there's one side. Here's the other. Yep, 1.2 mega ohm, 1.3. It's reading mega ohms. It is toast. Um, just for a definitive test, so my fingers, my body resistance isn't part of the circuit here. Let's test it again. And here we go. No, it's actually open. It's my fingers doing it. See this? Yeah, that's my body resistance. So, just isolated from the circuit, just like before, it was, res it was reading zero. If I test it out of, whoop, out of circuit without my fingers touching the leads, wide open. So there's our problem, R811. So let's get a new one installed, get the chassis back on the tube, and I'll bet you it works just fine. Alright, just like that, the resistors changed out. Here is the old one that was open. And the new one, you can see it looks a bit different than before. It's right, right there. And out of circuit, it read, out of circuit, this resistor reads 102k ohm. So in circuit, it reads.
62k ohm, 62k ohm. Well, that's good. It's between the 50 and the 100. 62.04. Perfect. So let's get this back on the tube and see if that fixed our issue. So we got the chassis back on the tube. I have not turned it on yet. So you can share in the knowledge with me of whether or not replacing R811 fixed my black and white image. Uh, so let's see what happens. Uh, everything is hooked up. We got anode, neck, yoke hooks is hooked up, our ground wire. Video, count to five. So let's turn it on and see what happens. All right, that's good. At least it came on. And, well, we've got green at least. It's way, this is way overdriven for brightness. Well, we got something at least. It's better than it was. Let's turn our contrast down and turn our brightness and contrast, brightness and contrast all the way down. Let's turn our screen pot down. And, hey, look at that. Does contrast work now? Hey, it certainly does. Look at that. Bam. Brightness. Turn that back down. Roughly about there is not too bad. It could use a bit more adjustment, but yeah, look, I got color now. How about that? Contrast all the way down. About middle. Hot dog. So there you have it. Of course, I'm not going to go through into huge detail of adjusting RGB and brightness and white balance and black balance and all that. That's not the purpose of this video, but yeah, as you can see, now I've got color. So R811, if you've got a 7400, 7500, U2000, U5000, where it's just a black and white screen, or you can't adjust your colors, or nothing seems to work, and no contrast control, replace R811. So hopefully this helped you out, and stay tuned, because i got two more U5000s to get uh, fixed up, so we'll see how those go. I'm waiting on parts. Should be here tomorrow, and then uh, we'll see how I can I can get those going. So stay tuned, and uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully this helped you out.